Hello and welcome to this repair guide. In this video we'll be opening up a Tuxedo Series 16 Gen 2 and show how to replace the battery, RAM, mass storage and network card. Since we didn't show it in the last repair guide to the Infinity Book Pro Gen 9 device series, we'll also be showing how to clean the fans. This repair guide is applicable to both the Gen 1 and Gen 2 variants of the Series 16, as the internals have largely stayed the same. To open up the series, I used the Philips Zero bit, which fits both the smaller and larger screws. You will have to remove 11 screws in total, two of which in the middle at the front of the laptop are of a smaller size than the others. Compared to the Infinity Book Pro 14 and 15 devices of the 9th generation we had a look at in the last video, the series has a much looser fit and should be easier to open. Here I started out with the more difficult corner of the laptop and eventually switched sides as the other one was much easier to get into. Now let's have a look at the internals. Down here we of course have the battery which is surrounded by the two speakers and an M.2 SSD slot. Up here we have another M.2 slot for an additional storage device and two slots for DDR5 sodium RAM modules. Hidden under the black protective foil is the network card. Occupying the upper half of the series are the CPU on the left and the AMD dedicated graphics chip on the right, covered by the dual fan cooling system. Because we take safety very seriously, we first unplug the battery connector. To get to the battery, we need to remove these two screws here. With the screws out, we can lift up the battery like this. Next up are the RAM modules. To remove a module, we push down on the little metal arms holding the module and push them to the side. The module will jump out like this. Now we can simply pull it out of the socket. Please try not to touch the contacts of the RAM modules with your bare hands, as covering them in grease from your skin may impede the electrical connection to the socket and, in the worst case, could render the function of the RAM module unreliable. To reinsert the module, put it fully into the socket at an angle and then push down at the protruding end of the module to have it properly held in place by the little metal arms. Next we'll have a look at the SSD. First we remove the small screw. After that we will likely not be able to pull the SSD out of the socket just yet, because it's likely stuck to the thermal pad underneath it. 
Therefore, we'll be carefully pushing up on the SSD at its end to loosen and separate it from the thermal pad. Be extremely careful and controlled here so that you don't end up applying too much force and breaking the SSD should the thermal pad suddenly detach. Wiggling the SSD around a bit may give you an idea how much further the thermal pad needs to be separated in order to pull out the SSD. Once the SSD is loose enough, the small protrusions of the SSD at the socket may give you a good grip to pull it out. Of course, also apply pressure very carefully here, so the SSD doesn't end up as a deadly projectile flying across the room. Putting it back is luckily much easier. Simply put the SSD back into its socket at a slight angle and then tighten the screw. In case you want to make use of the second M.2 slot, you may need to remove this thermal pad first. With this particular device, the pad is clearly too thick to fit the SSD into the socket. Be very careful when peeling away the thermal pad, as there are small electrical components underneath it that could easily be damaged or broken off. Instead of removing the pad entirely, you could also peel it off, cut it down to an appropriate height and put it back on. Next up is the network card. Peel away the protective foil to access the screw. With the screw removed, we can push up the antenna connectors from below to disconnect them. Then the network card can be pulled out. When reconnecting the network card, it's likely easiest to first attach the antennas and putting the network card into its socket later. By gently rotating the connector of the antennas, you can test if they are properly connected. Lastly, we'll show a bit how to clean dusty fans. If you have some kind of small air blower or compressed air can, you should block the fan with your fingers from spinning uncontrolled during the cleanup. Of course, it's advisable here to hold the laptop at an angle so the stirred up dust doesn't settle on the other parts of the laptop. The same applies to cleaning the fans with a brush. If you want to be extra careful, you can try not to spin the fan at all during this process, but slowly rotating it by hand shouldn't be a problem. Let's now put the series back together. Don't forget to plug in the battery again. I didn't want to cover the whole view with my hands, but you can just plug it in like a normal person.
When putting the screws back in, don't forget that the two small screws go into the middle at the front. If you didn't make any serious mistake along the way, the laptop should properly boot up again into the operating system. Has this video been helpful to you? Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you very much for watching.